The Queen-like Closet, or Rich Cabinet was a cookery book published in 1670 by the English writer on household management, Henna Woolley It ran through five English editions by 1684. At least two German editions were also printed. The book provides a recipe for trifle, involving cream but no custard, a gooseberry fool, hot chocolate, and cheesecakes. Woolley's mince pies still contain meat as well as dried fruits. Ingredients include pumpkins and molasses from the New World. The book contains the first known recipe for Sussex pond pudding. Topic. Context Woolley had already published two books, The Ladies' Directory in 1661, and The Cook's Guide in 1664. She was probably the first person to make her living by writing books on household management. Topic: <inaudible> Book. Richard Londies brought out Woolley's The Queen-like Closet in 1670. The title is a reference to W.M. S. 1655 book The Queen's Closet opened. The book is dedicated to Woolley's friend Mrs. Grace Busby, daughter of Sir Henry Carey. Page one of the book, however, contradicts the title page by naming the book The Lady's New Closet. O.R. Rather Rich Cabinet. Topic approach The book consists almost entirely of numbered recipes, prefaced only by Woolley's letter to all ladies, gentlewomen, and to all other of the female sex who do delight in, or be desirous of good accomplishments, and a one-page address ladies, I do here present you in verse. After the recipes are bills of fare pages 353 to 369 for different times of the year, including for extraordinary feasts in the summer, for winter season, for lesser feasts, for fish days and fasting days in ember week, or in Lent, without feasting, in winter in great houses, Woolley then describes pages 378 to 383 the duties of each office, including the cook, the maid under such a cook, the butler, the carver, and other servants, and then the gentlewomen who have the charge of the sweet meats, and such like repasts. Part 1 of the book describes the making of many such sweet meats. The book ends with separate alphabetical indexes to parts 1 and 2. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Illustrations. The book has no illustrations other than the frontispiece, which has six kitchen scenes, including a three-legged pot over an open fire, cordials being distilled, a bread oven, and pots and roasts on a spit over a fire, topped by a tidal medallion. It is inscribed, Printed for Rich. Loans. Topic. Contents Topic. Part 1 The 293 recipes in Part 1 are not grouped explicitly, but knows. 1 to 36 are for medicinal cordials and waters, such as, to get away the signs of the small pox. The following recipes are a mixture, with cakes, creams, and puddings, medicines, preserves, and wines in no discernible order. Number 58, a trifle, is made with boiled cream, rosewater, mace, and some rennet to help it set. Number 109 is a gooseberry fool made with gooseberries, water, sugar, egg yolks, cream, and nutmeg. Recipe 101, to make collops of bacon in sweet meats, calls for marchpane paste, sugar, cinnamon, and ginger, sliced into escalopes as if it were bacon. The foods described are the sweet meats which Woolley considered that her gentlewomen Readers would have the charge of recipes involving meat appear with nose 138 and 139, with to make crystal jelly, using knuckle of veal and calves' feet, and to make china broth, using china heart's horn, a red cock cut in pieces and bruised, raisins and pearl barley. Recipe 142 is to make chaculato. A hot chocolate drink made with claret, chocolate, egg yolk and sugar. Topic part 2 Part 2 is headed the second part of the queen-like closet, having an addition of what hath already been treated of, and directing a very true and excellent way for all manner of cookery, both fish, flesh, and pastry. It contains 288 recipes, and is ascribed to Hannah Wally, alias Shaliner, and published by R. 
L. in 1670. Recipe 3 is the first for a main dish, to make collard beef, the flank of beef being marinated with saltpetre, spices and herbs, and then braised in a pot with claret and butter. Recipe 6 is for cheesecakes, using milk, manchette to thicken it, butter, curd, currants, eggs, and a little cream and sugar, with pastry. More meat dishes follow from number 18, a chicken pie, with recipes for brawn, pasties, and an elaborate oleo with a fricassee of calves' head, oysters, anchovies, pigeons, bacon, sweetbreads, and veal. Recipe 102 is for minced pies, the filling inside the pastry being made with veal and suet in equal amounts, with dried fruits raisins, currants, prunes, and dates, spices, verjuice and sugar. Recipes 113 to 121 are for fish dishes, starting with a fricassee of oysters. Recipe 132 is for pumpkin pie, the pumpkin being fried with beaten egg and then baked in slices in a pie cruist with dried fruits, butter, sack, and some sharp apples. Recipes 144 to 157 are for meat or fish pies. Recipe 261 is for a haggis pudding. Recipe 285 is for vin de meloso, or treacle wine, calling for molassos boiled with spices and rosemary, then brewed as you do beer. Topic. Additions Five English editions are recorded 1671st edition. Richard Londies 1672 second edition. Richard Londies 1675 third edition. Richard Londies 1681 fourth edition. R. Chiswell and T. Sawbridge 1684 fifth edition. R. Chiswell and T. Sawbridge at least two editions of a German translation were published as Frauenzimmer's Zeitvertreib. 1674 A supplement to the Queen-like closet or A little of everything. Reception The historian Wendy Wall describes Woolley as a domestic female celebrity who acted as the Martha Stewart of the 17th century. Wall argues that Woolley's cookery books including The Ladies' Directory in Choice Experiments 1662 and The Cook's Guide 1664 as well as The Queen-like Closet and its supplement are part of a rags-to-riches tale in which domestic expertise Offered social mobility, the essayist Charles Lamb wrote that he found a copy of the Queen-like Closet in a bookstall. I lit upon a ragged duodecimo, which had been the strange delight of my infancy, and which I had lost sight of for more than forty years. Being an abstract of receipts in cookery, confectionery, cosmetics, needlework, morality, and all such branches of what were then considered as female accomplishments. Kate Calhoun notes that Woolley addressed servants for the first time," in her books, focusing on practicality and economy. She argues that Woolley succeeded best by recognizing that people "...wanted to offer upmarket, modern dishes on a constrained budget." She brought fashionable ingredients like anchovies, capers and wine into her simplified dishes, with frugal advice on reusing leftovers. Calhoun however criticizes her organization, Although she set out to simplify, the disordered arrangement of Woolley's books, in which pickled cucumbers appeared next to orange pudding, was a far cry from the model of clarity presented by May. But, Calhoun concludes, Woolley was a fine, solid cook, who was prepared to roast Woodcock, the French way, however much she disliked the show of some rare whimsical French cook, using bacon over the bird's breast and serving it on toast. And her bills of fare were carefully detailed with a buttered apple pie, an almond custard or a syllabub, the dessert of the age. <laughs> <laughs> Notes